what a beautiful, beautiful track. I will never tire of hearing that one. Rata Namia, Zubin Nutyal, and a C score. Savinda Rana. ABC. Radio Dabi. 26 minutes past seven with you until eight o'clock. Uh, next, uh, we're talking about self-defense. 15 years ago, she was a teenager, Zainab uh, Jogi, also known as Z, uh, and she decided to channel her teenage frustrations into martial arts. Fast forward to today and Z runs her own fitness and self-defense academy. She's on a mission to teach other women, especially those of South Asian heritage and Muslim heritage like herself, uh, the skills of self-defense. And if that's not enough, Z is a Guinness World Record holder for completing an obstacle course at the summit of Mount Kilimanjaro, the highest mountain in Africa. And uh, Z joins the program now. Good evening, Z. Hi, how are you? I'm very well. Uh, first, before we go any further, let's uh, uh, hear about the Guinness uh, World Record. Talk to us about uh, that and what you had to do. Yeah, so um, it was a challenge that's never been attempted before. It was through the world's highest OCR, which is the first, uh, world's highest obstacle course. Um, and it's in Tanzania, it was in Africa. So it was, it was summiting Kilimanjaro at 5,895 feet. But to achieve a Guinness World Record, you had to do um, five obstacles within the 10 to achieve this record. Um, there was also, it's actually a double Guinness World Record, so the second one was the world's highest fitness class as well. Mm. So I'm the only Muslim in the United Kingdom to complete this challenge. Wow. And to do an obstacle course on top of a mountain, um, only you can do it. We will never, ever even try to do that. Z, <laughs> <laughs> uh, tell us about your journey into martial arts and why you chose to go into self-defense. Um, so it was just started off as a hobby, really. Being younger, I wanted to sort of get more disciplined and I decided to join a Muay Thai kickboxing class. And it became a passion, became an addiction, and I volunteered for the gym, became a Muay Thai kickboxing instructor, taught a lot, a lot of women self-defense. Up until the last couple of years, we decided as, you know, to set up an academy for females only to mainly teach them more about not just attacking, because that's sort of easy, it's more the defending and understanding the law, which is when I went on to learn more about Krav Maga, which is a military-style self-defense training, and I qualified as a civilian instructor last year. Uh, from your experience, is it a world where we're seeing more uh, British South Asian women like yourself getting involved? Absolutely. And it's great that after lockdown, you know, the demand has been um, really good, especially with the health and fitness in general. And I think people are coming out their shells and they're sort of wanting to learn more about self-defense because they want to get out more. People want to do things, you know, and understanding the basics, you know, could save your life. Mm. And, and talking about saving life, I know you've spoken about the impact of cases like that of Sarah Everard and other women who've died at the hands of violence. Um, and, and that's made you want to make sure that women are equipped with self-defense tactics. But is that also so women have the confidence to feel safe and not just perhaps just about the fighting aspect of it? Absolutely. So it's having that knowledge and we feel the knowledge is key in understanding self-protection because it avoids you being a victim. So you sort of understand the psychological side of a violent attacker or if they have any sort of, um, you know, thoughts of attacking people. And it, this, the courses that we offer gives the confidence to women so they understand so when, you know, they're not going to get into those sort of violent relationships or if they're out in the street, they'd be more aware of your surroundings, etc. So that is something that we teach. So we teach the basic fundamentals and how to protect yourself. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, sport has been in the news quite a lot recently, particularly yeah. with the case of Azim Rafiq and racism uh, he's faced in cricket. How are things in the world of martial arts and self-defense? Uh, have you faced any discrimination or is it a completely different type of uh, setup? Um, it's quite similar because it's a very male-dominated sport. So being quite a petite figure, I'm only a size eight, uh, five foot three, um, and people do judge me, and they judge me my whole life. But for me, is you know breaking that stigma and that attachment that women can learn martial arts, and now obviously I prove that women can also become instructors as well. And I think sometimes it's a little bit of a hinder to males, um, you know, to their ego really. Um, you know, especially when you're in a, a class full of males, 
and you're the only female training, they will mm. look down at you. But when mm. you start sparring, as an example, is when you're the lethal side comes out, shall we say, and that's when they get quite surprised that a little rocket can do a lot. <laughs> <laughs> and let's see what you can do on radio. I know this is radio. If it was television, we'd have you in the studio and, and you could teach us. But are, are you able to teach me a self-defense move on air by just talking through the airwaves? Yeah, so there's a vulnerable part. Um, it's called the uh, sternum, which is if you feel your rib cage, so feel yeah. your bones. Okay. Okay, R right. So follow your rib cage right to the middle. Now there's a little soft spot just underneath that, and I yeah. please don't press it hard because it does hurt. Yeah. But if you make a fist or a fingers or a anything that could push at that spot, that could actually wind you. And that's yeah. happened to me numerous times in the ring. Uh, where I've sort of, you know, knocked me out for a couple of seconds. So that would be a push kick or, or a knee or anything to that area. You'd push straight down and that would obviously sort of, you know, um, affect the um, the breathing. Okay, so that's just underneath my chest bone here. That's the, that's the soft bit, isn't it? So the rib cage, uh, yeah, yeah, the yeah, rib yeah, cage. Yeah. Just okay. that middle spot there and don't press it too hard. But if you press in you'll feel that soft bit there and that is the vulnerable part of the body. I'm glad you said don't press it too hard, otherwise there'd be silence here for the next half an hour. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Z, finally, how can people find out more about the work that you're doing? And if someone's listening to this uh, here at BBC Radio Derby, uh, I would like to get uh, into martial arts and learn about self-defense, how can they? So we have a website, zsdefenseacademy.co.uk. Uh, we're also on the social media platforms as well, and we do travel um, as part of our organization to deliver services to different organizations. We're also on uh, YouTube, which is Train with Z, that's Z with a double E, and the website will be live tomorrow, trainwithz.co.uk. Alternatively, you can just give me a call directly on 077-206-36847. Uh, Z, it's been a pleasure talking to you, and thank you for that tip about uh, self-defense, and best of luck. Thank you so much.